In this video, I'm gonna show you all the new updates to the Samsung keyboard on Android Oreo. This video, I'm gonna be using the Galaxy S9. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech with Brett, where I help tech work for you. So let's head right into the messages application on the Galaxy S9, and I'm gonna show you a few quick updates that you have. Before we even open the keyboard, I wanna show you a few tricks in the messaging application. So right here, you do have a audio recorder. So if you wanna send a message via audio instead of typing out a message, all you need to do is hold down on this and it will begin recording a message. Hey, how's it going? I can't wait to see you. And then here it gives you the option to play it back to listen to it. and then you can send that message right there. Then right here on the S9, you do have a play button. So the play button allows you to instantly add your AR emojis that you have previously created. So when you add that AR emoji, you will see it play. And then when it is sent, that is how it will show up on the other phone. Now that will work on other Android phones as well as iPhones. They will be able to see that message. And then if I select the plus right here, I do have more options that I can download different stickers to attach to the keyboard. And then over here, we do have the plus, which is the attach option. So right here, I can send pictures that I have taken. Here I can open my camera to take a picture. Here I can send a doodle. So you can just write on here, you can change the color on the side. You could add a picture there on the back or you could add a location. And then when you send that, it is actually going to play like the live message from the Samsung Galaxy Note 8. And then you can send that off. And then last you have the pin location. So this will search your maps, find where you are at, you can select done, and then it will actually send your location so that they could easily navigate to where you are. And then last under the settings of the messaging app, we have a few other options. Here we can schedule a message we can add quick responses, add a subject, add image, video, audio, contacts, calendar, a Samsung note, or a voice recorder where you can add a voice file you have previously recorded. So those are all the default settings that you have in the Samsung Messages application. There are a few other cool tricks you can do in the messaging app. In the settings, you can go up here and you can pin the conversation so it always shows up at the top of the messaging application. You can see recent pictures that you have sent back and forth, and you can add other contacts to this messaging thread to create a group message. But let's go back and talk about the keyboard. To pop up the keyboard, just tap on the text box. And now here we have what we are used to. We have the row of numbers at the top, we have the keyboard, and then on the back we have the hidden icon. So if I wanna do an at symbol, I can long press and there it presses the at symbol. Now at the top is where we are starting to see something different. So right here, now usually this top row is a autocorrect bar. So if I select the T, that's gonna swap that back to the autocorrect. So here on the autocorrect bar, when you are typing, it is automatically trying to figure out what you want to type. And then you can quickly tap the word that pops up and it will input that into the text message thread. But if you swap back to the little attachments here, we have a few different things that we can do. So right here we have our emojis. So if we tap on this icon, there we have access to all the emojis. Now a cool trick on some of these, if you long press on them, it will actually pull up different emojis that you can use as well. So there are tons of emojis that you are able to use right here. And then down here, you can quickly jump between the different options that are available. Then if we wanna go back, we can hit the refresh right there. And then next we have stickers. So stickers are something that has been used on other apps for a while, but right here you can easily add your AR emojis and you can swipe over and see all those at the bottom here. If you want to organize this menu of gifts that show up, you can select the settings, delete some of them, add more. And then here you have some preset stickers that have already been installed. Now next, let's head on over to the GIF option. So a GIF is a animated picture, and right here it is automatically pulling up some GIFs. And then over here, you can select trending, happy, fun, thumbs up. So a bunch of GIFs that have already been created. So if you wanna send, instead of an emoticon, you can send one of these to express your emotion right there, and you just click send, and then that will play for the recipient and you as well. If we go back into the GIF keyboard, we have a few other options down here. Now, one thing I am noticing that is missing from this tab is a search function. So right here, 
you have the different options at the bottom and you have your recently used gifts, but I do not see a way to search for specific gifts. Next, you have the voice input. So if I tap this icon, it pops up this box where when you talk, it will then input it into the text message. If you wanna backspace or stop, you can tap the microphone to stop and then you can use the back button to go backwards. Before I go into the settings, you do have a drop down right here on the right hand side, and this will show you a few other options. So if you wanna reorganize how this looks, maybe you aren't using these stickers as often, you can actually pop up the keyboard up here and it will rearrange those. So there you can have all those in one row. Here you have the one handed keyboard that you can easily get to. So when we are done, if we go back, now you can see that it has made those smaller and you have all those options all in one. So let me show you what the one-handed keyboard looks like. It shrinks it down to this side. I can switch it to the other side or I can make it go full screen again. Now let's head into the settings of the keyboard. So here at the top, you do have different language types. So right now I have English added. I can come in here and add more languages. Let's say I want to add Dutch. So to change the keyboard, now that I have two added, I can hold down and then swipe left or right and you can easily switch between the two keyboard. There I have English and there I have Dutch and it will quickly jump back and forth between those two. Back into the settings, the smart typing. So this is where you can adjust your predictive text and other information. So at the top, predictive text that is on right now. Down here we have auto reply. So these are the languages that will automatically change your text and correct your text to. Here we have text shortcuts. So text shortcuts are a really cool trick. So let's say I got my brand new phone and I wanna create a shortcut for my email address. So here I'm gonna type in what my shortcut's gonna be. So TWB for tech with Brett. And then my phrase would be my actual email address. So Brett at tech with Brett.com. Now that I have my phrase added correctly, I can select add. And now whenever I type TWB and select space, it's automatically going to correct to my email address. Now you could use this in a bunch of different ways. I recently used this when I created the edge lighting video for the Samsung Galaxy S9. I was able to send a bunch of office quotes from my other phone by using text shortcuts. So I could easily type one, it would type in that phrase and then send it off. Like let's say I want to type on my way, OMW, and then I can have it type out on my way, be there in 15. And then I select add. So now let's go back to the keyboard and show you what that does. So here I'm in the keyboard. I type TWB. And right here you can see that it's going to autocorrect to my email address. And that's why it's highlighted. I select space and there it has added my email address. If I type OMW, there you can see it popped up on my way as well. If I didn't wanna choose that one, I would need to select what has popped up right here. Or when I select spacebar, it's automatically going to correct it to on my way be there in 15. So that is a really cool feature that is on the Samsung keyboard. Next we have auto spell check. So if you want to add a English dictionary for spell check, here you can add auto capitalize after the first letter of a sentence. There you can change auto spacing. Here we have auto punctuate. So if you double tap, it will insert a period. And then last we have keyboard swipe control. So typically most people like to have the swipe gesture. So swipe allows you to the swipe keyboard allows you to connect the characters of a word together to complete that word. So it's very fast and fluid to type. But if you do not want to use that option, but if you do not want to use that option, you can have no swipe gestures or you can choose cursor control. So cursor control allows you to scroll through the keyboard to actually move exactly where the cursor is. And then you can tap shift and slide your finger across the keyboard to select text. So now let me show you cursor control and how that works. So when I'm in the keyboard, if I swipe over my keyboard, you'll see it's moving my cursor back. So then I can go to a specific point, maybe I mistyped something and I can change how that works. Now it did say if I hold shift, I can select just like that. So that makes it really easy to go through and select text. Maybe I wanna erase the whole thing. I can do that very easily. 
Now let's go back into the settings and look at a few more things. So those are all the options under smart typing. Next you have keyboard layout and feedback. So right here you have the keyboard toolbar on. So that is what we have been adjusting this whole time. And if you turn that off, it's gonna move back to the typical style of where you would find all the settings and the emojis down here where you hold the comma button and it'll pop up all that information. Here you have high contrast keyboard. So this is available for different accessibility reasons. You can change your keyboard to yellow, the black and white, another color here and the blue. So if you need that, that's definitely a great feature that has been added to the keyboard. And then here you can adjust the size and the layout of the keyboard. So if you wanna turn off the number of keys, you can do that. If you wanna turn off the alternate characters, you can easily do that. And then if you wanna adjust the size of the keyboard, you can just drag this down and it will shrink the keyboard down or you can pick it up and that is as big as the keyboard is. And then it will allow you to type in here so you can see if that is exactly how big you want the keyboard to be. And I'll keep it that big so you guys can easily see the keyboard. If we go back, we do have custom symbols. So with the custom icons, when you hold down the period, it will pop up a list of different punctuation marks that you can add or special characters. So instead of the underscore, maybe I want to have the plus there, you would just tap the plus. If I wanna change the percent symbol to the and symbol, you would be able to do that just like that. And you can go and do that. And if you mess it up, you can hit reset and it will take it back to default settings and you could choose any of these characters, maybe you're always using the heart symbol, you would be able to do that right there. And then last here we have key tap and feedback. So when you are typing on the keyboard and your volume is on, here it is going to have a small sound. So most people typically like to turn off the sound so that you are not interrupting anyone that you are sitting by hearing the tap, 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 tap. So I do suggest to turn that off if you do not have a need for it because you do have the vibration. So whenever you type on the keyboard, you will have haptic feedback. So that's where every little press, the keyboard vibrates indicating that you did touch it. And then here you have character preview. So that means that when you are typing on the keyboard, and then here when you're typing on the keyboard, before you let go of the character, you will see the icon at the top pop up. So you know that you are pressing on the right key. And then back here, you do have reset to default settings. So if you're having any issues with your keyboard, that is something you would wanna select. And if you wanna see if there are any updates, typically you can go into the about keyboard and here those updates will show up. And that is it for the Samsung keyboard on Android Oreo. One last trick is if you wanna swap out the keyboard, you can tap the keyboard icon down here in the bottom right hand corner, and that will allow you to change to any other keyboard that you have on the phone. Typically I do use Google keyboard, and so if I had that downloaded, it would show up as an option, but right now I'm just going to keep it at the default keyboard. And there you have it. Those are all the new settings that you can use on the Samsung keyboard. If you guys have any further questions or if you learned any other tricks, I'd love to know about them in the comments below. And if this is your first time here, I'd love to have you subscribe so that you can be notified of my new and upcoming videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video.